All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Agent Outreach Live. Um, it always feels weird like doing the intro on this show because now that it's like once a month, I'm like, I know, right? Hello. Uh, but welcome to Agent Outreach Live. Landry, how are you doing today? Pretty good. It is so crazy how like, you know, we used to do these every single week and time goes by so fast. But then, you know, it just feels like it's it's been way longer than a month as well. For sure. And I, I love the show. I love doing the calls for everybody. Our whole goal for the show, if you guys aren't familiar with it, is essentially pulling back the curtain and showing what the conversations look like with real estate agents. Why is that important? Well, I think real estate investing in general is the best career for a lot of people. Um, if you're the type that can enjoy roller coasters, you can handle problem solving and you can communicate, you will thrive within real estate investing. Uh, it's not for the week, but with all that said, the part of real estate investing that I'm most passionate towards is helping. I think that helping people get their first deal, getting started, it's a skill set that is probably the hardest to learn, in my opinion. Uh, I've gone from the point of no deals, where's the next check? Uh, I can, oh my gosh, I got a deal every month. And then it's the three to five deals a month. And then it's the five to 10, 10 plus, so on and so forth. The hardest hurdle is to get that first deal. The second hardest hurdle is to get to one deal consistently. So if that is any kind of reassurance, breath of fresh air, what we are trying to do within the agent outreach strategy, as well as on market acquisitions is essentially the lowest barrier of entry. It's the lowest cost of acquisition, I should say. Um, with that, obviously, again, these calls are very easy. Um, I mean that with all due respect to agents and to investors, but the calls are easy because agents need clients. So when I'm calling, I'm not trying to pretend to be something I'm not, I'm not lying to anybody. I'm going out there with my intention being that I'm an investor and depending on what the deal is that they have to offer or what the relationship might turn into, there's a million different options. So before I keep rambling, um, Landry, let's talk about batch. I think batch is, yeah. um, one of the best tools and resources out there that people are just sleeping on. If you are not familiar with what batch is, Batch Leads is like a SaaS company that essentially you could use for multi-purpose. They've got a CRM, they've got a dialer, they've got data, a lot of the stuff from all things direct to seller um, and on-market acquisitions is essentially under one umbrella. So Batch Leads uh, helps support and promote this show. And that's why Landry is here. And Batch is what we use to actually go and get the agent information. Uh, there is some things we can't unfortunately share, but from what we can share, we can go through together. So. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I was looking at the time that it took me today to pull it and it was less than two minutes. I know um, you texted me like 20 minutes ago. You're like, where do you want to call? And I was like, yeah, today I actually want to call Columbus and two minutes. Yeah, I'm later, excited. Like, yeah. So. yeah, I just I sent it over probably even a few minutes after I pulled. Out. I was like, oh, it's not too early to send it over. And it just really speaks to how quick, like it doesn't have to be overcomplicated with getting information. Even if you guys are doing, you know, if, if anybody's dealing with direct to seller as well, you can do it in as a short amount of time with, with batch leads as well. But with agent outreach, I pull the same exact filters every time. And earlier when you were talking about these easy conversations, I tell people about it all the time. I'm like, we've probably had maybe eight people over the course of these many, many months that we've been doing this show say, I'm not interested. And they didn't cuss you out. They weren't necessarily unkind. They just straight up said, I don't work with investors or that's kind of right. not my area. But all I do when I come in here to pull these lists for Ryan in these different markets and he doesn't, you know, he doesn't look at these beforehand. Really, it's just a list of names and phone numbers. And there that's is it. no script. It's awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. But I just go into agent outreach. Oh, whopsie. Can't show you guys that. Um, I go into the agent outreach tab and then there's basically a set of filters that you guys can access in there. And I'm going to get it up on another tab to make sure that it lets me filter it out. But you can start filtering things like the active listing count, how many they currently have sitting on the market and, and what they've sold in the past kind of few months as well. Usually what I do is we enter the location. So like today we did, we went to Columbus. And then you can search for the name or the office name or the brokerage they're at, how many are active. Once again, I do like three to five every single time. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I really did different today is I did a minimum of three to up to seven uh, properties that have sold on the market in the past six months. So I just upped that a little bit more. Usually I do three to five there as well. And that's it. And, it gets and really also great. one thing that we've done uh, that is just worth mentioning, if you guys didn't want to do just three to five, when we started pulling data in other markets, we kind of found that one of the things that 
um, just depended again on the market. Three to five was a super small quantity. You could go to the bottom custom range and just do mm -hmm. three without a maximum. And it says minimum then of three. So in the last six months, if they've sold at least three, meaning that yeah. if they've sold six to 10, but we didn't highlight it, they would still pop up as well. Exactly. Yeah. Great point. If you're wanting to pull a much larger list of agents and it's not going to be as focused, like as we're doing here on the show, with just, you know, maybe 30, 40 agents type deal, then, you know, might as well make that a larger search. But seriously, that's all the filters you do. And then it pulls up a list of agents like this and you don't have to skip trace them. You don't have to dig for their information. This is why it takes me less than two minutes because I put in my filters and then I just pull <laughs> all of their stuff. It's awesome. And but, Landry, um, what's the cost to batch every month? It's 99 in the bottom plan. And that has like driving for dollars, agent outreach is included, all this info, polling list of sellers wow. and buyers, even more. There's skip trace credits in there now, cheaper skip tracing. So anyway, I, I mean, I can go and on and on. Just to note on this, the reason again, it is blurred. Unfortunately, we have some restrictions and guidelines we have to follow on YouTube where we can't share people's public information, even though this is a commercial number and a realtor. Um, with that said, we have to be mindful of it. We're going to be putting some trainings and stuff inside of our school community without the filters. And then also at our mastermind, we'll be doing a live in-person demo at the batch headquarters using agent outreach um, and their system. So if you guys are trying to get a little bit more information on the things that are blurred, we have other places and resources for you to find um, how to use it fully. Yeah, absolutely. And usually, you know, when we're on these shows and I send over these agents to Ryan, I'm on the back end after I stop sharing my screen, I start going down the list and I just go down and start making notes on all the agents. You can change the mm -hmm. status. You get all of this information once again, just included with all of the agents without having to skip trace or dig around for info once again. So especially for anybody that's kind of getting started and you don't have a ton of things or a process built out yet, you don't really need to, to go outside of batch as you're kind of getting the ball rolling as you can kind of just manage your agents in one little spot. So pretty cool. Love it. Love it. Love it. Well, let's get to calling. Let's give some people some value. And if you guys have any questions, this is an interactive show. So feel free to drop your comments below and I will answer them as we rock and roll. Cool. All right, Landry, top number is their cell or the office? Yeah, top is cell and then uh, office underneath. Cool, let's rock and roll. Okay. I don't know my party's extension. Michael, you're too confusing. Call on Kevin. Michael's got a very big operation. Got property yeah. management, got a bunch of stuff. <laughs> And again, we're calling Columbus. Um, why? We started working some deals in Columbus. So selfishly, I want to get some more realtors. I'm not double dialing. I'm just going to keep going. Calling Cheryl. Yes, you can double dial. A lot of realtors do answer. That does work. Cheryl just sends me right to voicemail. Um, it's okay. And in this case, I'm just going to send a text to Cheryl. I always get the million dollar questions of why double dial? Why not double dial? When do you determine to leave a voicemail? When do you not? Um, how do you text? How do you decide when, when you don't? A lot of it is just kind of in your flow. So depending on what it is that you feel like you want to do, you can. Um, LaShawn is a, a great question. It's exactly what we're talking about. I don't think it's a bad move. Um, it just depends on how desperate you are too. And I don't mean that to the subjective. You could be like, well, Ryan, I want to deal now. So I'm going to double dial everybody. If you dial someone and they send you right to voicemail, I'd probably text. If you can tell that it's a iPhone message and you have an iPhone message. Yeah. Texting is amazing because you can see ideally when they read the message or at least when yours was delivered um, with that double dial. Never double dial bad news. Never double dial when you're submitting a lowball offer and you know it's uh, insulting. Uh, if you're doing an outbound message, it depends on the day, depends on the time. Right now, I could justify double dialing, but for the sake of just trying to get someone on the phone, uh, I'm not trying to piss somebody off on the second dial. Cool. 
Colin Seth. Okay. Agents in Columbus. You have reached Seth Janiski. Now, the cool part is we know these are right numbers. The voicemails are telling us their name. The bad news is we're calling realtors. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> realtors, I always like to play the glass half full side that they're at a closing, they're with a client, they're saving a cat from a tree. They're doing anything else that is more valuable than answering the phone where money's there. Um, and with that said, don't let that be taken out of context. Like this is not like a brand new call and I have no idea what I'm trying to do. I have buyers in Columbus and we were trying to get deals, mm -hmm. multifamily and single family home to. Tristan speaking. Hey, I was uh, looking for an agent out in Columbus and I got this yeah. number. Yeah. Uh, um, are you looking for a, to buy or to wrap? I'm ideally looking to buy. Okay. And are you looking for something to live in or investment? Investment. Okay, and what's your name? My name is Ryan. Okay, and what's your last name? It's Zolin, it's Z-O-L-I-N. Okay, and what's your email, Ryan? something specific that you're looking at um i am not opposed to a zoom i would be more open to like just kind of like telling you a little bit about what we're looking for and then if you have something cool if not um whenever you can help us with finding it we're pretty particular on what it is we're looking for out there um anything that's okay. like 10 ahead, 15 minutes of like the ohio state university uh multi-family two to four units ideally okay all right. What's your goal for, um, uh, you know, what's your, what do you use to figure out what you want? Do you use cap rate from cash? Do you use 1% rule? Yeah. Great question. Um, cap rate for sure. Uh, we've been submitting offers on some things that are on and off market that are like at eight to 10% based on where our offer price is. Um, yep. so that's kind of like our sweet spot. Anything above that. I mean, I would, I would love. Yeah. Good luck right now. We're looking at 4% in Columbus and that's if you're lucky. <laughs> is that new build or is that, um, without renovation? No, that's, yeah, that's just buying, you know, buying and renovating. Um, so what I can do is set you up a search, but yeah, I mean, it's just, there's so many people coming in from out of town into Columbus because of Intel coming in. Yep. They're literally like, you couldn't get a big apartment complex if you tried. There's like big conglomerates coming in and buying them and they're losing ten, fifteen thousand $15,000 a month because they know they're going to get 25% appreciation in the next five years because of Intel. Hmm. So are so, you, are you guys buying properties too then? Oh yeah. We all I work with, that's all I do is investments. So I work with a ton of investors and um, I do invest myself as well. Okay. I mean, if you don't mind me asking, how are you primarily like acquiring? Is it on market? Some on market, some off. The stuff I buy for myself personally. Who am I talking to? This is so, um, you know, we can buy Tristan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hate to say it that way, but no, like, for sure. Like, for sure. The stuff that's decent, I sell to my clients, you know, and they can get loans on them. The stuff that's crap, I buy myself. Okay. And is that like, are you buying single family then? Or are you buying multifamily? I buy both. Um, I don't care. I don't have a preference because I only go by the cash flow. Um, I've been doing this about 18 years. I don't, I use cash flow. I don't use cash on cash. I don't use cap rate or any of that. Um, even though my company is called cap rate, I only use cash flow. and, you know, I buy single family and multifamily, single family make about double per door Who's the client? family. So, you know, if I'm going to buy a duplex and it's going to cost $300,000 and I can buy two houses, you know, for $300,000 and make an, you know, double the money, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, are you buying from like any local investors or are you, um, like, is that a thing out there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we don't like, we don't have a lot of investor to investors, you know, um, sales around here. Um, although like, you know, I have investors who sell stuff to 1031 and mm -hmm. my clients get first dibs on those. 
So like I've got one guy who's trying to um, buy a, um, uh, I think it's a 16 unit in 43229. And if he gets, you know, if we can get him in contract on that, we'll part with one or two of his fourplexes. And those will then be um, sent out to my clients first. So that's kind of more investor to investor. I got you. Okay. And then um, I don't mean to like ask anything personal, but just want to mm -hmm. make sure I understand like how we can make you um, get compensated as well. Is the like wholesaler then like, is that like a thing? Is it like a wholesale fee? Is it a commission that's paid to you? What's the best way to work out that compensation? Yeah, on those ones, I mostly just do commission unless I've closed on it myself. So okay. I usually just do commission paid by seller um, unless it's a wholesale deal. And then obviously the buyer pays it. Um, and we do close on a, you know, we, we do close on some, but like I said, most of the stuff I buy is you, you would need to have, you know, a GC or, mm -hmm. or you, you know, you would have to, you know, contract with like one of our GC companies to get them put back together and then refi them because that's kind of how we operate in that field. Okay. Um, the wholesale stuff is mostly totally crap. Yeah. I mean, honestly, we've been on a few wholesalers lists and that's kind of what brought me a little bit more to the multifamily side is that a lot of the newer wholesalers don't really know what they're doing there. So they don't play around as much like they do in the single family. Yep. So, so but like I said, I buy both. I honestly... You know, people are always like, you know, always telling me um, uh, that, you know, well, then if you've got one, somebody, you know, one's vacant, you got a whole thing. I'm like, if you have four, four houses, it makes no difference as, to, you know, right. a fourplex and four houses are the same. So for me and my personal investing, I don't care whether it's single family or multifamily. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my clients, they only want a multifamily because of the obvious reason that 10 loans per social security number means, you know, yep. you get 10 fourplexes, you have 40. You get 10 single families, you have 10. But again, in my mind, if I'm going to make just as much off 10 single families or more than I made off 10 fourplexes, then it did. I mean, doesn't matter to me. I only go on cash. Right. And I mean, that's all like a personal preference. And I understand the game either way. I could spin it. Um, both sides make sense to me. Yeah. So, so um, okay. I mean, I would definitely be interested in the Zoom um, because I think there's a okay. way that maybe we could even do something where I don't know if you need capital for deals, but maybe that might be an easier way for me to make my way into that market is if we could fund some deals that you're working on or if you know sure. any other investors that need capital too. Uh, we always have investors that need capital. Yeah. Um, okay. So let me shoot you an email and then let's schedule a Zoom for tomorrow because I've got to run to a meeting right now. Yep. Um, or I can call you back in a, maybe an hour and a half. Um, I'm going to be in a meeting in about an hour and a half as well. So let's just uh, plan on an email and then I'll get back to you tonight. Whenever you've got some time available for tomorrow or on Thursday, we'll plan it out. Okay. Sounds awesome. good. Thanks, Thanks so much, Ryan. Appreciate it. Bye. Uh -huh. All right, guys, we're done again. Was it? <laughs> um, no, that's fun. She was ready uh, to go right there in the beginning. With she, the was. Questions. she was just like, yo, what's your name? What's your social? What's your blood type? And I'm like, <laughs> ah, um, but no, that was cool. I, Held my own there. That was one of those, what I would like to say is higher level conversations where um, Herman, beautiful, you said it. Uh, she was on it. Like, she was like, Oh, I've been waiting for Ryan's call. What can I do for you? Um, and I'm <laughs> yes. like, I'll take a medium house, small what fry, like with a milkshake. Uh, no, they, they definitely were on it, but we withheld. <laughs> uh, we're good. Yeah. Go. We're here. Everything's fine. I said yes to a Zoom, which I rarely ever do, but because she, um, announced that her brokerage is not usually one of the two or three that I know what their spiel is. Uh, I could tell she knows her stuff. Uh, her brokerage name is cap rate. So why not work with a girl where her brokerage is primarily investor focused? And so is she, she came from the list on batch. Uh, awesome. I think cool. like the fourth person. So literally, I mean, that was, I called Michael, Kevin, Cheryl, Seth, and then Tristam. Okay, so yeah, fifth, so, yeah, fifth person. Uh, one hand, one hand, right here. I called called four people. They did not answer, but just for context, the one that did answer, we went one for one. So, one awesome. for one on that side of things is awesome. Um, that is somebody that I'm, yeah, I'm gonna write down that number. She is good. Cool. If you guys have any questions on that, feel free to drop them in the comments, and I'll gladly answer anything. Why I said something specific way or whatever. Now, why are you hesitant about a Zoom call with an agent? Great question. Uh, a lot of times brokerages or brokerages will say um, are licensed investors where they will require you to meet on a Zoom with them. And then they give out their spiel about their process and they have you sign like a NDA essentially, which means that you can't send out any properties that they send you. You have to sign an agreement that says any deal they bring to you, you are not going to assign. 
But the irony is that majority of the deals they get are from other investors on market, or it's something that in a very rare occasion, they went direct to seller on. The point is those three things that are all wholesaling. So why would they want me to sign something that says I can't do what they're doing? Yes, I could double close, but it's a principal matter for me. Um, I refuse to work with hypocrites and I have a luxury of choosing who I do business with. So I'm not going to do business with brokers just like that. Yeah. Cool. Let's keep it going. Let's call Troy. Great nugget. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And hey, LaShawn, I saw your comment. Hope you're having a good day too. Um, I think I might've called the office line by mistake. Um, is there an, an agent in the office right now that can help with uh, an investment property? Yeah, hold on just one moment. I'll check for you. Cool. What I'm doing there, I don't want to talk to Troy. Troy was too cool for me. His yeah, number wasn't I'm right. Saying. He just put his office line, which by the way, the way that Batch gets their data, if the agent has the office line in their bio, that's the number that's pulled. Mm -hmm. So this guy is too cool is what I'm saying is that he put his office number instead of his own. So when you're like, you're calls, missing out, man. Yeah, I mean, it's okay, Troy. Um, it's going to be like his arch nemesis real time. I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. your call has been forwarded to an this is your hungry realtor? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And they texted me, can I call you later? No, you can call Troy. <laughs> <laughs> On to the next oh one. my gosh, that's killing me. Also, by the way, in my normal like agent outreach like zone, there's music on in the background. There's like more sunlight. I'm, my desk is standing up. Like there's a lot more that goes into it. You will drive yourself insane if you're. Doesn't matter if you're calling agents. Doesn't matter if you're calling other wholesalers. If you're calling sellers, especially if you're calling sellers, make sure you've got mm. your zone around you. You need to have whatever it is you need. Um, I have a few friends that actually refuse to let people on their team make calls on the day they start if they're not in the right headspace. So just uh -huh. make sure you understand like how important it is that as you're making calls, you have to be like going for the no. And that's a very common sales like script and line that people say, go for the no. So in this mindset, I don't let the fact that they're not answering ruin my day. If anything, I feel sorry for these other people. And that's such a weird way to spin it. They don't understand that I'm an opportunity that's calling them. And one of my sayings is that one of the hardest part of being a realtor is to find a client. So if you can understand that as a client that's calling, looking for a realtor, the irony is that all they have to do is answer their phone. Yeah, I'm not trying to qualify them. They should be trying to qualify me like how Tristam did. She's a good realtor, a yeah. very good realtor. I'm not to toot my own horn, but it's because she's probably an investor focused realtor. Uh, that's what makes the difference a lot of yeah, the time. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah, good tips too. It's good to you know be in the right environment when you're doing you know focusing. You gotta on be, calls. gotta be. If you're like working from home and you've got people chirping in your ear, you're sitting there trying to like do something, you just can't focus. Like, get out. Like, literally, go and take a laptop to a coffee shop for all that matter, and find a way to just get in a different environment mm -hmm. or in a different zone. Because, I mean, that's what's gonna help make or break the day. Let's call Sammy. Bro, no way. I hate old people sometimes. <laughs> like all love, but like, God, <laughs> it's fine. Call Lisa. As I just got done saying, it's not going to ruin your day. Like, <laughs> starts like oh God dang it. <laughs> oh, that is too good. That's funny. Uh, uh. Yeah, right. Honestly, um, 
I thought about sending texts prior to the show starting and being like, hey, like I would love to chat with you. But the problem is that you guys don't get to see the organic oh, part yeah. of what agent outreach entails. So while yes, I agree with you, I think they hate money. Um, I'm spinning it again that they just are busy. They're doing whatever else it is. And the way I have to just accept it is that it is what it is. So it's a good idea though. If you had a focus list, you know, send a quick text. Could, and look at the end of the day, I mean, you could text it and then schedule a call and call them. Sure. The reason why this show is as entertaining as it is, is because I'll have that one call. That's like, boom, money. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it. The next call I could get cussed out. I could call 15 people in a row and none of them answer. There's mm -hmm. a lot of different variables of what could happen. But rather than trying to think of all the negatives and things that might happen that aren't in my favor, I'm just spinning it. I'm literally going to go and just keep calling and calling and calling because there's another person on this list like Tristam that if I don't call enough people and get told no, or if mm -hmm. enough people don't answer, I'm not going to get to that next person yep. that is going to be worth the conversation. Yeah, exactly. So. Plus the organics of it, I think definitely like you brought up is For super sure. important. Yep. And I pinned uh, Scott's comment up here. Love it. Ryan mindset um, seller slash agent has to sell to um, has to sell me has to convince me why I should buy their property. Not the other way around. Yeah. I mean, dude, I don't want like uh, anyone to understand like this in a bad way either, but like we're investors, right? Like we have to make the numbers make sense. So I don't need this house. I want it. Um, if it works cool, if it doesn't, okay. They, maybe don't need to sell, but they want to sell. So the desire of what they're looking for as an outcome and what I'm looking for, it's the same solution. It's just that I don't need it and they more likely do. So uh, yeah, you could go and call a bunch of motivated sellers on the MLS and all this stuff. It's just, this is part of the grind. Mm -hmm. Who did I just call? I think I it was Lisa. Or did you, oh, okay. It's Lisa. So we're calling Joseph Pepper. Can I say his name? Is that a thing? Don't take us down, YouTube. Like, we're fine. <laughs> I fine. think it's fine. Yeah. I was about to say, I don't know. There's like 50 million of them. It's a yeah, very common name. Point. It's like Mike, yeah. Mike Jones, Tom Jones. Yeah. Joe, Joe, Joe. This is going to be a great QA call today, guys. Um, very much looking forward to it. Yeah. I have some questions for you, too, that I'll have to ask. Hi. Um, yep. Is this Brandy? No way. No way. Dang. She's still going that's through the eclipse, everybody. It's fine. That was our first. I mean, that's the first, though, the, the first time that's happened on the. I can't the tell. Show. Hello there. This is voicemail for Brandy. Whoa. Um, sorry for the typos comping, writing offers while I listen to you. Good. Good, good, good. Have more typos because you're submitting offers. So yeah. typo away. I'm just sitting here making calls. So we're both working. I really need to look at their names before I just call. You're on Gina? Yeah. Or you already called that one? Okay. Gina. Also, too, um, hopefully that's reassurance that you could just make calls and not always have every answer. There is no address. I'm not comping anything right now. I'm just making calls and smiling and dialing. We need some like positive energy up in here. Um, someone share a win. Any win? What do we got? What's been a win of the last like we are nine days into quarter two of the year? What's a win? Put it in the comments. Bro, people are crazy. Who was that? Um, that one was man. Um, there's too many. Uh, Cephas. How would you pronounce oh, that, Andrew? Cephas, I think. Cephas. But something like that. I mean, you're probably right. I'm always wrong. 
C E P H A S. It's all good. Um, beautiful. Let's go. Do you have a number of days on market you are calling? Uh, Landry, this list is three to five active listings, three to seven sold in the last six months, right? Yep, that's right. Cool. Scott said two nice. contracts in a three close since beginning of the year. Okay, Scott. See there you, you go. Like this dude's a professional over here. Um, that's what we're talking about. Brandon says, canceling a contract to speak. Two new buyers in the new Texas market yesterday. Five offers being reviewed by my buyer. Major deals in major market. Two deals under contract being reviews. We're not going to say the last part because it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's fine. Cool. Well, nice job, Brandon. Um, sorry to hear about the canceling a contract as we speak. Uh, but also, too, similar to celebrating a win or a lesson learned, I always look at any kind of contract that falls through as a lesson learned. It's not a loss. You already won by getting the property under contract. The lesson learned is that it might have been a little bit high. So, no, no, dude, stop it. Like, we're not even going to talk about any other sports team out there. It is just, I'm manifesting positive vibes for my team. We need it. But this is, uh, this is Agent Outreach Live, and I'm not going to cry. <laughs> so, so fine. Football hurts. I'm calling Sandra. Okay. It happens. Sandra Merkel. Hey, Sandra. Uh, my name is Ryan. I'm trying to find an agent out in Columbus that could help me with purchasing a property. Okay. Um, are you, have you awarded, have you been in Columbus before? I have not. I've got someone that's like in um, the community that I'm in that we're helping out and we're trying to work on a deal together. She's going to be funding it and then we're working on helping acquire the deal. Okay. So, um, are you, are you a lender or are you another realtor from another uh, country or I'm, state? Yeah. I'm a licensed agent in Arizona, but we wouldn't be acting as an agent in the transaction. We'd be acting as the principal. We just need an agent that could help with assisting us the, with the purchase of the property. Oh, okay. I can definitely do that. Cool. Um, I'm not sure exactly where to start. I'm like I said, I'm licensed in Arizona. I've just in the past bought deals off the MLS and, um, now we're, stepping foot into this market where I'm not all that familiar. Um, my partner is out there, but what the parameters I have at the moment are, are is basically anything around like Ohio State University, excluding just a couple different zip codes. Um, but like I said, I don't really know where to start. I'm not sure if you think we can get something on the MLS or if you think that we should try to find something off market or where you, would you recommend? Okay, so um, I've worked with a lot of investors before. Is your client an investor? Yeah, so I mean, like we're partners. I, I don't think of it like a client thing like um yeah okay so let me just let me just explain our market a little bit um you know it's super super low inventory yep. right now super seller's market <laughs> sure. and it's really hard to find um properties are you looking to fix them up or you want to buy them as is or yeah so i mean a little bit of both um the buying and holding would be more ideal for like multifamily, uh duplex to like fourplex um, anything around like a million dollars or less. Uh, and then like single family home. I mean, I'm pretty much open-minded on that. I'm not opposed to buying and holding as long as the numbers like would yield. And then as for flipping, I mean, that would be, we just need to make like 10% of whatever I could sell it for. So if I could sell it for like 300,000, as long as the spreads there that I can make like 30 on it, I'd be fine. Oh, okay. So you, do you have people on ground that that will do the work on yeah, the flip. Absolutely. Yeah, we've got a couple of contractors. Um, I mean, full transparency, um, we haven't found one we love yet. So I'm still in like that dating phase. But with that, I mean, if you have any recommendations, I'd be more than happy to entertain them as so well. I'm, I went to Ohio State and I've been born and raised three miles from there. So I grew, I, grew, I'm, I live and have been raised in a suburb called Upper Arlington. And so it's really close to Ohio State University. So, I mean, I am super familiar with everything around there. I guess for me, I would need to know more of, are you, are you building up a rental portfolio? Are you doing to trying to do um, a flip and sell? Are yeah. you, you know what I mean? For sure. I mean, so um, my background, like with rentals, I've got a couple in Arizona that are single family. We've got some multifamily out in um, Tennessee that we've got ties with. And then I've done like a lot of like joint ventures similar to something like this, like where 
it's not my capital, but I bring in somebody else's capital and we partner on the deal. And then I go and I find the opportunities. Um, so rentals wise, I mean, it's not a huge portfolio. It's enough to where I could have a conversation and definitely more than happy to share any addresses or whatever you need on that side. Um, but then when it comes to flips, I mean, we flipped about 50 homes total, um, mostly in Arizona, a few out in Florida, and then some light stuff out in Tennessee. Uh, Ohio State University caught my attention because we have capital that we don't really need to spend too much money on on our end. And because it's going to be cheap money uh, and Ohio is the market that they prefer, it seems to make sense for all the boxes being checked. Yeah, because everyone knows about Intel coming in. That's exactly what it is. Yep. It's yeah, it's it's crazy. And it's it's more. So just so you know, it's more east side mm -hmm. of Columbus. So it's yeah. New Albany, Newark, Johnstown, mm -hmm. all those little. And Columbus is a city, unlike Cincinnati and Cleveland in Ohio, it's a city that was founded on more on suburbs. So we have a pretty vibrant downtown, but it wasn't it wasn't a downtown that was really old school. Do you know what I mean? So you can say you're in Columbus, Ohio, close to Ohio State, and you can literally be in the suburb of Plain City or Marysville, where Honda is. That's west side. Or you can go east side and go Heath, Ohio, Johnstown. So there's just in Granville, there's so many places mm -hmm. that I think for me, for you guys, I would need to really, we need to have an in-depth conversation about what you're really looking for. For sure. Um, what would be the best way to go about that? Is that an email? Is that like a scheduling another call? That, 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 so I'm at my office. I've just, I have three new listings coming on. Nice. And so, and I'm leaving to go show a condo downtown to um, a phone call that just came in. So I just don't have that time right now. Yeah, for sure. Um, and honestly, I got to pop into a meeting here in about like 15, 20 anyway. So I don't want to so take any time. Yeah. For us. yeah. So the best thing for me, are you a Berkshire Hathaway agent? No, I'm over at Real Broker. Okay. All right. So what give me your name real quick. Yep. My name is Ryan R Y A N. And my last name is Zolan. Real estate license commercial too? Uh no, in Arizona we don't need like a commercial license. We just need our traditional residential license and we could do both. So I mean I've that's, yeah. that's how it is here. Yeah. So my husband's a commercial uh real estate um broker. He does he he works does all lie tech business, low income housing tax credit. Yeah. I don't I don't know if you fucking realtors, that. man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you guys have a license? No, we don't either. Okay. <laughs> But my husband, okay, fucking plug him in. Plug him in, oh my gosh. And in multifamily, she'd probably be a bigger fit for you. Cool. Because she, she's worked for commercial real estate companies. Yeah, I mean, honestly, on the multifamily side, I mean, we're... We're not in any kind of rush. Our main goal is that if we could get something by quarter three, that would be the goal. Um, so single family or multifamily, it's just a matter of whichever one pops up first. And I would imagine multifamily is a little bit harder to find. Yeah. And anything you can't, you know, it's a different type of loan. You can't get a, a, any kind of a loan if it's over a four flex. Yep. Okay. So you're, are you looking for less than four? Yep. Four, four plex and duplex primarily. Okay. Four plex, duplex. Okay. And your partner who you have here on the ground, is he a realtor or is he working with realtors? She's also licensed, but um, our main thing, honestly, how I've always done business as like a realtor is that I don't care about representation. Like I want you to make as much commission as possible. And regardless of what change happens in July or whatever that might look like, I'll be the client that happily pays two and a half, three percent every single time. Okay. So. Well, you typically hear sellers still pays that For even sure. though we've got big lawsuit we have to sign buyer brokers and all that fun stuff For sure. so okay and so is is that worth me knowing her name as well or not um i would like to keep it anonymous just because she's gonna be funding the deals and uh we're gonna be trying to keep that relationship close to our like okay. chest yeah and do you have sure no problem do you have an llc yep we do it's uh 34 holdings llc is my entity it's licensed and everything and it's all in good standing in arizona and then we've bought multiple properties across the country with that llc 30 it's called 34 holdings yeah and it's the number 34 and then holdings is plural perfect i got that because my sister is a real estate i have a lot of uh, attorneys in my family as well cool. awesome <laughs> so, 
So because sometimes here it's hard to take title in LLC. Sometimes you have to do it afterwards. There's always this little fun things. Yeah, no worries. But, and I mean, we're, we're pretty flexible. We've got a few title companies that we called and had relationships like formed with before I started making calls to realtors, just because I like to make sure I've got all my ducks in a row. So contractors, the okay. funding's good, title reps. Um, and we're pretty flexible on that side too. If the seller or other agent on the other side um, has a preference. I mean, as long as that other title company is like investor friendly, I don't, I don't care. Okay. So I think the best thing for us to do, Ryan, would be to have a more in-depth conversation, maybe even with my two daughters when they're available. Um, you know, because I don't know how many people you have on the ground looking. If this is something where you go, I'm taking really She's trying to pawn her daughters off of me. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. You know, if you've got a lot of people in a pot looking, sometimes it doesn't work out beneficial for, for us. For sure. No, it's, I, I it's understand. A of, it's a question of procuring clause, which I know you know. What yeah. That's all about. 100%. You know, so if we, if you've got a lot of people out looking on the ground, then I would tell you, honestly, we're probably not that interested. No, for sure. And, and honestly, I mean, we have, um, like I said, she's licensed, but aside from that, it's just her relationships as well. Um, I'm making calls right now to a couple of realtors. Uh, you were the second person that answered. And the first one I talked to was, um, not really my speed. So I'm looking for someone that's okay. going to help out and really make this like worth both of our time. Um, since we're licensed, I know I could get a referral and a percentage of that kind of stuff. And since we're not even looking for that, um, hopefully that's a sign of how I run my business. I want it to be a win-win for everybody. So as long as you're winning and I'm winning and everybody else is happy, I don't really care. Right, exactly. Cool. And I don't know if you're big on Zoom calls, but maybe that's something. Uh, my daughter Mary's getting married next month. And so um, she's going away to Asheville, North Carolina for her bachelorette party tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and my daughter Veronica is her maid of honor. So they're a little, they're not, they're out for like the next For sure. Five and honestly, I mean, I'm pretty flexible. Whatever works best for you works for me. I mean, if it's a Zoom, I'm not opposed to that. If it's another phone call, that works too. Um, if I get a property under contract, I mean, I'm possibly even going to be taking a trip out to Ohio. So, um, I mean, what, yeah, whatever works best for you, just let me know. In your portfolio. So what my guess would be, let's schedule a time for next week. Cool. Yeah. If you just want to send me a text, this is my cell. Um, let me know what times work and then I would be more than happy to accommodate. We can figure something out. Perfect. And yeah. um, I'll send you a text uh, with my my um, business card. Cool. It, and I'll just take a picture of it and send it to you. And then I will, um, if you just respond with your email as well. So I'll have this down and we'll just set up a time next week that'll work for everyone. Sounds good. I appreciate it. I hope you... I would like their input. They're, they're younger than me. I'm, I'm the old experienced lady. And they're the ones that love to hit the ground running. They're the, the aggressive young people. Cool. Sounds good to me. I appreciate it. I always like the aggressive and, young people. And they went to Ohio State. One went to University of Cincinnati. So they know the area really well. Sounds great to me. I appreciate it. I hope you have a great time at that showing. And then if there's anything else you Thanks. need, just let me know. All right. Sounds wonderful, Ryan. Thanks. Take care. All right. Sometimes you just got like, the girls just go crazy for me, guys. Like, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, my mom told me it was one of my skills, but like. God, she just kept telling me about her daughters. And I'm like, dude. She's like, like, anyway, let me like, tell you a little more. Let me tell you about my TC. Like, um, <laughs> no, it's <laughs> everything's all good. I don't know what the deal is with Ohio and Zoom. They love Zoom. They love they're Zoom. like, <laughs> they're like, I don't know what you're doing like now, but if you want to see my face, let's do it. And I'm like, Yeah, and you're like, we could have the same conversation. Over the phone. Right here. Um, You're like, right here. Look, this is a judgment decision. Do I encourage Zoom every time? No. The only reason I'm entertaining it is because we're not calling a bunch of realtors in Columbus yet. I am doing more of our approach of one by one by one and just seeing where it leads. Um, with that, I think we've called probably a couple hundred so far. And we have a few that we've added to our database. If you notice how she tried flipping it back saying, well, if you're planning on talking to a bunch of people, it's not something I'd be interested in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> You're like, when, are you sure about yeah, that? I, I promise that's not. You're the like, case. you will be sorry if you. That's if why I said you, I'm like, uh, I kind of reframed it. And I was like, well, I mean, look, I haven't called a bunch, and the first person I talked to, I don't know enough about yet. So, um, you, who's qualifying who again? Because like, if you want to tell me like you're not interested, it's all good. I'm not interested in playing games either. Let's just get this show on the road and move on. Mm -hmm. um, but she very much is interested in working with investors because the hardest part of being a realtor is to find a client. So if they're always looking for more business, 
why wouldn't they say yes? Um, and she started talking about procuring flaws. That was funny. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll keep going. LaShawn said, well, actually, if I did not see your face on this agent outreach training, I would ask for a Zoom call too. Cool. Um, and I understand, I guess, to an extent, um, agents that have so much time to sit on Zoom, I question what you do else with your time. Uh, just because 15 minutes on Zoom is not existent. So it's more likely a minimum of 30 minute call. And it's going to be more of a, let's really make sure everything is buttoned up. This is a traditional realtor thought process, which I get. My time is valuable. And I'm not saying it's more valuable than a realtor's, but if they don't value theirs enough to where they can say no to Zooms or no to coffee or no to whatever else is getting pitched, they're not that busy. So I'm not really saying on the a pro or con side that a realtor that's busy or not busy has any advantage. It's just a matter of the ones that clearly have time to do Zoom over and over and over. There's somebody teaching that. That's my point. So whoever's teaching it is teaching them to not value their time. I could be driving to a showing and have a 5, 10, 15 minute conversation, qualify somebody out, give them three or four action steps, and then have a, another meeting set up. I don't give a shit if my daughter or whatever is at a bachelorette party and the other one's a maid of honor and they went to University of Cincinnati and Ohio State University. Like, shut up. Shut up. You are over communicating to a client and you are going to make yourself look bad. This is not meant to be a personal relationship yet. Just like how you were trying to qualify me and threaten me a minute ago, I'm still not 100% committed to you. If we're going to be completely honest, you're a tier one realtor to me. And if you're an agent investor, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, this is the lowest bottom tier person. That's a realtor. Like I'm not, my hopes are zero, literally zero. So yeah. I wanted to ask you too, Ryan, kind of like, as we're, we're going through this with kind of coming back to the beginning of when you are starting to pull up a list of agents, of mm -hmm. course, we're always doing the kind of the same criteria because it ends up working and getting some good conversations. But um, I wanted to talk about also, like, what do you look for? What do you not look for? Do you ever notice the brokerage? Like, I don't send you the brokerage name or anything like that when yeah, I send yeah. agents, but, and it might be to analysis paralysis, but is there something for somebody that's kind of getting started with this um, to watch out for when pulling up a list of agents? Why would you? Yeah, think that um, sort of things, you know, it's really not with the pulling of the data. It's more of the conversation with the agent. So things like, brokerage don't necessarily matter to me unless I could pick up in two seconds that they're like, let's hop on a zoom and I need you to sign a, a non-exclusive. Mm -hmm. I need you to sign this, this, and that, or not a non-exclusive an exclusive. I need you to sign all these things. I don't like jumping through hoops and pulling teeth to be set up on a list that takes them two minutes yeah. um, with all due respect to realtors. But on the contrary, I understand why they're trying to qualify so much. My point is there's some brokerages that not only overqualify, they make you have to do some unreasonable things like signing away your life that you won't do anything outside of buy this property in your name with cash. Otherwise, they will sue you. I don't cash. like those kind of people. Um, so just make sure you're wary of anyone that wants to hop on Zoom and make you sign a bunch of documents. Second, anyone that gives you constant kickback or any kind of like, ah, just I don't know. I mean, like they just, you could hear it in their voice that they're not interested. Yeah. Um, third, I mean, actions speak louder than words. So if someone's all fluffy up, whatever on the phone, and then next thing you know, they're crickets. I don't know. That's it right now, yeah. It's like yeah. if you go out on a date and it's like, even just like you follow the person online or you add that person as a friend or whatever it is you do on social media, and then you're talking for a little bit and then that person goes to you, you're like, what the heck? Yeah, like, yeah, good point. Is it me? Like, did I do something? In this case, I'm just going to tell you they're not interested. So we're looking for people that are interested. No, I love that. I think that's good because same thing, anytime that we pull up data on here, it's like I said, part of it of taking only two minutes is that we're not going through and analyzing like, ah, oh, should I, shouldn't I call this agent? Things like that. So I think that kind of just speaks to it. It's not so much about the data that you're pulling just to reiterate that what you just broke down, I for thought sure. was important. Yeah, um, at the end of the day, realtors are realtors. So, I mean, like Fausto said, um, I thought she had a showing. I was laughing at that because it's like, she's trying to act like she does more than she is or that she, I've got three listings by the way. Yeah, no shit. That's how you're on my list. Like, uh, what again, all due respect. I don't care. Like three listings to me is fantastic. But the way you're telling me about how business goes, I picked up on the first few things she was saying that I just wasn't impressed with. Oh, so you have your commercial license. No, we don't need it here. Oh, we don't either. 
as soon as she said that, I'm like, who in, who are you about to plug? Like, who is this that you're about to be like <laughs> about to plug? Because like, there's no reason that's uh, brought up in a normal conversation. You're like, I said, I wanted contractors, not. And I said multifamily. <laughs> I understand where the similarity is, but what her point was, it just didn't make sense. It was like you're trying to plug in now your husband who can get a referral fee. I know the game. That's why I also dropped the line of, look, I understand that you're probably looking for um, qualifications from me, but I also know my right is that I could get a referral fee and I'm not doing that. So I want it to be a win-win. I yeah. put her in her place. That was me saying, I know my stuff. So you want to ask me about a license that I don't need? What else do you want to challenge me on? Because you're not going to like that I could actually handle this conversation. Um, so most realtors catch investors slacking and yeah. the investor doesn't know what to say and they fold. Um, and also this is not meant to be like a, Hey, lie, like, don't lie. Don't try to be something you're not. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here, Ryan. You were able to hold your own with those two re realtors today that were very high, higher level. You want to know how fun it is having conversation when they expect you to know less than you actually do. The only reason I'm sounding good on the phone is because I'm on YouTube sharing it with you guys. A lot of the times when I'm making these calls, I'm, I mean, yeah, I do this, this, and this, but like, I'm just trying to do this. I don't, I, I don't know where to start. I kind of started that second call off with Sandra that way. It's like, I don't really know where I'm, how am I supposed to find a deal here? Like they want to hop on a zoom to show me the market, show me how much they know, show me their skill set. The skill set I want to see as a deal. Yeah. Um, so all that said, sounding confused, sounding lost, sounding even what some might fear is dumb is sometimes better. And my point, again, just to really bring that full circle, I like to be quiet and not know what they think of me other than they think I'm an idiot. Because if they think that I'm a waste of their time, their true colors are going to come out a lot faster. Mm. They're going to either show you a deal ASAP and see if you perform, which it's up to you, or they will just ghost you because they're underestimating you. And either one, in my opinion, is a win. So, oh, Such a good point. We got like five minutes here. Um, let's answer some questions. Um, Clint, put some respect on her name. She's Landry. Wait, what lady was with, it? Lady with the blonde hair. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Clint. I mean, it is blonde. Um, it, it is. You know, it's close. It's okay. Close enough. And again, if you guys want to see Landry in person, uh, she'll be at our mastermind coming up next month. So yeah, I'm excited. Do. Take a couple of minutes and talk about it. Um, we've got our mastermind coming up May 17th and 18th. It is a Friday and Saturday. Uh, if you guys are in Arizona or want to travel to Arizona, uh, our tickets for our mastermind are like 249 bucks. It's a two day event has a private dinner Friday night, as well as lunch catered to you. Uh, we're doing it at the batch office. So Landry's company that she's working for, um, that company has been awesome enough to not only help us with a live show and getting agent outreach implemented into their, uh, software. We have now got Landry flying across the country, hanging out with us at an event that is hosted at their building. Um, so it'll be super exciting. Fausto said, book my flight and hotel. Awesome. Uh, it's going to be a great time. I think we're at like 65, 70 people RSVP'd. Nice. Still got like a month left. So we'll probably hit up close to that 100 number. That'll be awesome. Yeah, I'm super excited. I think it's going to be great. So it'll be cool for to sure. see some of you guys there too. Let me pull up. I got a link here for, there we go. Down at the bottom there, everybody. Yeah. If you guys are interested in signing up for Batch, click on that link below. Make a little bit of money, full transparency. Uh, but that's the software that we use today to be able to pull all the agent information. Um, Jerry, I'll be posting that link in just a second. Uh, make sure to check out batchleads.io forward slash Zolan. Landry, is there still a seven-day free trial? Yep. Yeah. And with that link, you guys will get a thousand free seller, buyer, agent leads, and then, you know, a bunch of other stuff if you guys get out of the trial, but really, really awesome stuff. Once you guys get in there too, you can get in the batch community and I can teach you how to use it a little bit deeper as well without all the blurry. So I love it. And then I'll put this one in the chat. I just put it on the screen. If you guys wanted to come and hang out at the mastermind, agentinvestors.com forward slash mastermind. Uh, we, I think are sold out of VIP tickets. If it lets you go through on it. Awesome. Um, to my understanding from the team, I think we're sold out. So general admission only, uh, feel free to book a ticket book a flight if you're out of state, travel in, drive in, take a camel. I don't care. Get your ass out to Arizona. Um, we are going to have a great time. It's going to be a full two days back to back. Uh, and we've got a lot of good stuff that I'm planning. So love it. Cool. We got one last question here um, from Pamela and then we can just call it early. 
Pamela said, can you explain that three to five active listings and three to seven close, uh, closes Yeah, from the last month? So essentially in batch, there's a way to filter out the agent outreach. So you could put it, Landry, do you want to pull up the screen again? Mm -hmm. so we can show everybody. Yes. More of a visual person myself. Yeah. Same here. Okay. Here it is. Okay. Can you see it? Uh, there oh, there you go. Okay. Let's do like three to seven. Yeah. So all we did here and Ryan can speak more to like why exactly. I mean, the way that I always explain it with these filters every single time. I mean, there's other things we could do here too. I think there was a time that we used the listing price and we were trying to find mm -hmm. agents that were working with a, maybe more kind of luxury. And if I can't, if I'm remembering correctly, but these filters really help Ryan and I pull up agents that are, are active. You know, they're actually, they actually have listings right now. They're, they're not just letting their license sit there. Um, you know, they're working uh, and, and closing. Like Sandra. Deals, She's so. like, I've got the three active listings that I just got and I'm going to a showing right now. She's active. Mm -hmm. That's how we got her on this list. Three to five active listings. She's got three to five active listings. Literally. She mm -hmm. just told us she got three more. Um, yeah. the sold listing count, we just want to be able to see that this person can actually produce. Now, all that said, I think what Landry mentioned a minute ago, the reason why I play devil's advocate to this is because some of the best relationships I got were agents that were brand new that had no idea what they were doing. And I was the first transaction they did. And I introduced them to a world that probably would have taken them a couple of years to get introduced to. And it was on their first transaction. Um, so don't let a filter discourage you try both. Try the one like this to start because it's probably a little bit hotter. And then as you've made your way through these kind of lists, start playing around with the filters to a little bit more vague. Yeah. Plus it gives you an idea. I kind of like doing the max as well, just so that we're not pulling up a bunch of just straight up mm -hmm. brokers so we can kind of get right in line with talking directly to the agent. So hopefully that helps Pamela. hundred percent. Love it. Love it. Oh. Well, guys, we appreciate you as always. Um, we will see you guys next month. Remember, this is the second Tuesday of every month. We are doing Agent Outreach Live. We appreciate you as always. Sign up for Batch. At least try the free trial. Um, we'll see you guys inside the school. And that's actually where I'm headed now. So I will see you guys in a little bit. See you guys next month for the show. And hope you guys have a great month. Peace. Bye, guys.